Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have one for the programmers. Today we're going to be checking out this uh, C++ IDE called the 10X Editor. Now this one is trying to sit at that space between, say, uh, Notepad++ and Visual Studio. So it's lighter weight than Visual Studio Code, there's no real setup required, and it's designed to support very large code bases. So here we are in the 10X Editor, the menu is up here, very bare bones and minimal otherwise, but it's very focused on performance. We're going to open up uh, the Godot source code as an example. So over here you can see um, it had parsed it from a previous opening. It can take a little bit of time to parse things, but it's still about under a minute. Here you can see the source code base for Godot over here. You do have your uh, MIP map here for your code, so you can jump at any particular point in position for the code. Uh, you do get syntax highlighting. Of course, you also get um, code completion. So you see here, it's parsed all the code. So there is our display driver. It figures out what all of the various different uh, functions and classes are. You have other things like control O, oops, sorry, alt O, uh, will open up the header file automatically. It is just designed to work out of the box with C++ projects, up to 5,000 plus lines of code. And it is designed to do it very, very fast. Right now it is in beta, it is free. Sadly, it is only available for Windows right now, but there is the intention of adding other environments at some point in the future. The user interface is uh, pretty bare bones in what you do. So here you can see open up multiple tabs over here. Uh, this guy, I have the option of opening up multiple panels you do have drag and drop so I can move things around uh, as I wish like so uh, it is a clean enough user interface. I can also uh, zoom windows. You can't zoom individual windows, which I do find mildly frustrating. At least I don't know how to zoom an individual window. But as you can see, if you're doing presentation or whatever, you can zoom the fonts up however big you wish. Uh, of course, we can also get rid of all of these so I can have it go down to one panel only or I can close it completely. You can resize things accordingly. One thing I do find a little bit minimalist in this particular engine as for an editor at this point in time, you'll notice there's not a lot of a refactoring going on here. You can jump to the definition. So it's a good way to navigate through source code. Uh, but if you want to start having refactoring tools, there's not a lot of functionality in here right now. Uh, there's tools for parsing. So all there, so you can rename things and that's kind of about it. Uh, you do have really nice and robust uh, find, find in the project, find in real time. Again, another key thing here, is it is very, very fast. So if you're going through your code base, this just smokes Visual Studio uh, and Visual Studio Code for a performance from what I've seen. Uh, you have the ability to do things like toggle off um, line breaks. You do have cold folding, of course. Uh, in terms of people that like to uh, customize their environments, of course, that option is here as well. So you do have various different settings you can control over here. You do have uh, color schemes that you can edit yourself, or I can come back up here and we can just pick one. So change the color scheme here. Uh, it is, again, real time and it is fast. So if you want to have a different look, a very simple, and as you can see, one of the trends you're going to, whoa, sorry, blindness warning. One of the trends you're going to find with this thing, again, is it's just performance focused. It uses, uh, I think, DirectX 11 for actually doing the screen rendering. So the rendering is fast, the parser is fast, the project handling is fast. So if you're looking for an out of the box, so no plugins required, no special work required, no nothing else like that. Basically, you just want to do some C++ coding on a Windows environment. This is definitely one to consider checking out, especially if performance is your big thing. Again, things are customizable. You have the ability to uh, basically minimize things however you want. You can, um, again, uh, drag and drop between tabs. You can't drag out yet. So if I want to create a new window, I can't do that. Uh, drag and drop is confined to the main editor itself. But um, I got to say, out of the box, it just worked. And I like it just worked kind of software. So if you're interested uh, in learning more about 10x editor, it is available at 10xeditor.com. Uh, so we'll start here on the homepage. Again, it is only available right now as a Windows download. Uh, it is currently quite free, which of course is quite nice. A high performance C++ editor for fresh developers working on large complex projects uncompromising performance and feed and speed sorry fast and efficient editing um so again it loads very fast so if a project has already been loaded before i don't know if i showed you from scratch here but let's just go ahead let's close our workspace out we're not going to save anything all right so let's uh let's bring that back so we'll uh we'll open that workspace here solution file boom it's loaded so uh it, it is definitely 
a quick thing. Now, again, it had already pre-parsed this, so you only have to do that initial parsing once. But as you saw, everything about this editor is just speedy fast, which is quite nice. Again, it also supports Visual Studio projects. You notice I just opened an SLN file. Uh, what it does not seem to support at this point, point in time, which is sort of ascending in popularity, is uh, CMake. So if you want to use a CMake-based project, you seem to be out of luck at this point in time. I wouldn't be surprised that that gets added in the future. Um, again, there is a C++ built parser built in. No need to actually um, add anything or do anything. It gets you auto-completion. You get definition go-to. Uh, you do get very simple refactor. You basically just rename, and that's about it. Uh, quick navigation. Another showcase I didn't show you. We also have support for um, multi-cursor. So you'll notice over here, multi-cursor right here. So Shift-Alt-Up. And then see here, we've got multiple cursors on different lines. So if you are the type of person that likes to do edits across a number of different lines, there is multi-cursor support in there, which is a very nice feature, fully customizable. So you can customize the color schemes, the fonts, the UI layout here. Uh, there is a plugin um, functionality here using the Python programming language. As you see, it is fully drag and drop as well. Entire ideas behind this guy are uncompromising performance, performs well on huge projects, and it doesn't get in the way. Now, I know that Godot Codeplace isn't like the biggest project you're going to find out there, but it is not a trivial and small one, and it definitely did a very good job with it. So um, it is, again, a little bit more details about the ideas behind it, the, the creator behind it, etc. are available on, download, on the About section. Uh, you can download it. I don't know if this is actually a 30-day trial yet at this point in the beta. I didn't get anything about being a 30-day trial. It just started working. Or you can support them on uh, Twitter to purchase it right now. It is still in beta and can be used free of charge for any, purchase, any purposes at this point in time. Uh, the licensing, when it comes out, will be a bit different. Licenses will be purchased monthly or yearly. So this is going to be a commercial project, but personal personal licenses are going to be available and pricing is not there yet. If you want some additional support, bug access, etc., there is a, uh, a patron backed uh, system here. So if you want to go ahead and support this product. Uh, another thing that is interesting is in terms of the roadmap. So we're sitting at, again, this is in beta, but it is a 1.0 beta. Um, so it's pretty much feature complete for version 1.0. So what you're seeing is kind of what you're getting. Some of the things they are looking at doing in the future are things like, again, moving to a DirectX 11 renderer, functional overloading, uh, error highlighting and source, STL support templated using uh, statements, autocomplete, more C++, refactoring tools. So again, that is one area where it is definitely lacking now. This guy's background is in-game development as well. Uh, so what you're going to find is it does things like it's going to be able to parse shader files. Uh, there's also things here for um, better Unreal Engine integration in the future. Right now, it obviously can open SLN files, so you can use this for the Unreal Engine right now, uh, but that will improve in the future as will support for syncing with Visual Studio, multi-monitor support, and that is definitely one of the downsides because you can't drag out of window, so your multi-monitor setups are going to be somewhat limited. I don't I don't code span uh, with my IDE anyway, so that's not a big deal for me, but it might be for you. Um, so yeah, some interesting things here. And then again, in the future, Mac port and Linux ports coming in. A C++ debugger, C Sharp parser, Python par parser, uh, DLL-based plugins, etc. And then we're going to get ligature fonts at some point in the future as well. So that is what they're looking at in the future. But right now, it is really honestly quite ready to go. Uh, it's impressive. It does nail the high performance part. I really hope that this 10x name isn't from that whole 10x programmer thing that was going around a while ago because the 10x programmer concept was about as dude bro douchey as any statement I've ever heard in my life uh, but other than a questionable name uh, the 10x editor I, I definitely recommend checking it out if you're doing C++ development on a Windows platform uh, it is what it says on the tin a very lightweight fast C++ IDE with a decent amount of functionality so ladies and gentlemen 10x CPP editor let me know what you think comments down below I'll talk to you all later and good